So, hello there guys. This is Ryan here. And this is other Ryan here. And today we're going to be bringing you all another fan theory. Now, this submission was by a YouTube user who goes by the name of Poskoon for the win. So, or FTW. I should have probably said it that way, but never mind. Congratulations once again. Your theory has been successful. And basically, what we're going to be talking about today is if the horror attraction of Five Nights at Freddy's 3 is actually what we experience rather than playing as a night guard. So, Poskoon's theory is that basically the map is the way it is because it's part of the attraction. Um, yeah. You coming as a uh, coming as a paying customer, and you have to survive the night basically and fend off of the animatronic. Yeah, I mean, if we do look at the shape of the map, uh, most of the corridors um, are very narrow. You see, I actually used the word corridor without thinking there. Uh, what I should be saying is all of the rooms are kind of rectangular. It's almost like a maze, isn't it? You know, with dead ends and stuff. Yeah, and the way like you can see like parts of the map where there's extra rooms on the side. Yeah. So maybe there's like, that's the way you kind of distract it off to another room to give, give yourself a bit more time, if you know what I mean. Yeah, because I mean, like in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, um, most of the side rooms, they actually have meaning and it makes sense why the animatronics would go and visit them. Uh, we had like the gift room and the, the party room as well and some of the other places. But um, if we know this place to be some kind of horror attraction, these other rooms seem fairly obsolete. So they're almost just like another area that you should be checking with the camera, isn't it? Yeah, maybe they're linking with the devices that we're given. Uh, yeah. The audio devices, camera system, ventilation. Uh, maybe these extra rooms are a way of distracting the animatronic into the rooms so it buys you a bit more time, like I said before. Yeah. So, so maybe it, yeah, it worked alongside that. Yeah, I, I think that's that sounds definitely uh, something that could be the case. I mean, if we think as well about... Uh, the layout of the thing, we have an office. Uh, if this was dangerous, for example, thinking back to Five Nights at Freddy's 1, it looks like we're sitting in a similar shaped office, except there's actually no door that we can close. So, why would they remove the door if they if it was more uh, safer to keep it? It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, does it? Yeah, pretty, mu pretty much it's maybe... Yeah, that was just for the experience of, like, the suspense and horror of the animatronic coming around the corner because obviously you can see the window in front of you as well yeah, I mean, so it's you'll be really, able to uh, see it coming so it's really suspenseful um that's going to be pretty freaky actually thinking about it yeah it's going to be <laughs> horrible yeah, oh, but gosh, like, yeah. Uh, what his th his theory then goes on to say that maybe this um feature this horror attraction goes wrong and the yeah. animatronic is actually out to get you yeah this kind of now this is where it gets darker and it becomes almost like you have to be the night guard in uh, an another way, which I'm pretty sure the person, if you are a paying customer, you probably didn't want this to happen. Or I'd presume you didn't want to almost die, eventually <laughs> die. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they wanted to relive the legend, but I don't think they literally meant to relive yeah. what is actually <laughs> happening. I think if but faced with the actual experience, it would probably be like, uh, maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, if um, the game continues on with how it's been played in the last games with the phone calls. Yeah. I believe that maybe the phone calls in the third game will be from uh, authentic actors that make yeah. the experience feel more real, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, like, that would... Uh, needs... But, be... <laughs> yeah, the, as we said before, it just those phone calls are actually the actual survival guides on how to actually survive the night rather than just a playful entertainment attraction, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, probably the phone calls, if that was the case, they'd probably offer us some advice, I think, but it almost might be even more dramatic just to kind of add the tension. And yeah, it makes you think, though, will this place kind of, as you're playing through the night, will some freaky music come on? That, may, that might be the audio devices. Um, I mean, will they enable to really build the tension for you? Yeah, like in Five Nights at Freddy's 1 with the music box in the kitchen, it yeah. gives a really horrible, suspenseful eerie feeling to it because obviously the music being played is nice and kind and kid-like friendly but <laughs> the actual outcome is just horrifying. I mean at that point as well when the first game came out most of us didn't really know what the purpose of this potential music box playing was. I think that that kind of freaked you out more because you didn't actually know what it was contributing to. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we've presented you with a lot of evidence in regards to why this might be the case. Now, it's always good to look at alternative ways to see why this might not be the case. And the first one which I want to pick up on is, uh, for example, if you are a paying customer and you want to experience this, it might just be a one-time experience. So, 
surely there won't just be one level to this game. We're expecting a kind of a hierarchy of levels which ascend in difficulty, which is what we're used to. Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and 2 introduced this. So how will the night system work if you're a paying customer? And I think this kind of backtracks once again to the idea that you are possibly the night guard of the horror attraction. Maybe it'll be like a difficulty setting where night one, you start off at a very easy difficulty, then as you make your way through the levels, it gets harder and harder. Yeah, potentially. Um, I think when you said that, actually, the first thought that came to mind is almost like the title screen will be almost like you're standing at the horror attraction ready to go in. So Yeah, and then it, you, you mean enter, it could possi- yeah. Or it could possibly be like before you enter, you can actually select your difficulty. All of them are unlocked, but you can progress, you know, through them to make it easier. So they're all unlocked from the from you know the first bit because you know in games you can always select easy, medium, hard, and whatever else follows. So it could be like that. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. So um, all right, guys, I think this is about as much as we can cover from this one. So be sure to also, of course, consider this theory and respond below accordingly with any ideas that you think we may have missed or if we've looked at this wrong or right. So thank you, Poskoon FTW, for sending in your theory. Uh, we appreciate every single theory, So as Ryan just said. Once again as well. It's another great theory, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. So send in all your theories in the comment section below or oh, yeah. personal messages, and we will always read through them. You got it. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you later. Take care, guys. Want to see even more content from us? Consider liking and subscribing to ensure you'll see all content in the foreseeable future. And hey, why not check out our past two videos?